So my credit score just dropped by 25 points overnight because I made a common credit card mistake and I get a ton of messages from people that have either seen a similar sudden drop in their score or they think their score is just lower than it should be and they wanna learn how they can boost it. So all this got me thinking and in this video here, I wanna talk about the five reasons why you might be killing your credit score, but I also wanna go over how you can fix those things and dramatically increase your score within the next 30 days. And I'll even explain the mistake that I made and talk about how I plan to correct that to get my own score back up to its typical level of around 800. Now, like I said, the mistake that I made was a pretty common one, but probably the most common reason that people see a dip in their credit score is because of new accounts they have on their credit report. Now, if we break down what goes into your credit score, there's basically five factors here that we gotta pay attention to and sort of just reverse engineer if we wanna increase our scores through a few simple changes. So first of all, if we take a look at this chart here, what we'll see is that new credit is one of those five factors to pay attention to, and it accounts for around 10% of our scores. Now, what you'll probably notice is that anytime you apply for new credit, pretty soon right after that, you're gonna see your score drop by a few points. And that's because applying for new credit usually leads to what's called a hard inquiry, which is just when a lender pulls your credit report to take a look at it and decide if they wanna extend you more credit. So that drop in your score from hard inquiries is basically meant to reflect the fact that when people seek out new credit, there is gonna be a slightly higher chance they might be in financial distress, even if you yourself are not. Now, depending on who you are and what your credit profile already looks like, the drop in your score here from new credit can vary and be less than five points or maybe as much as 10 points or slightly more for each new account you open. And what we've seen is that for someone that's basically newer to credit with fewer accounts on the credit report and less years of credit history, the impact of new credit to them is probably gonna be more than someone else out there who has many more accounts and more years of credit history. Now, there's two pieces of good news with this. So first, because the new credit factor only accounts for around 10% of your credit score, it is considered a low impact factor, so it's not going to affect your score as much as some of the other higher impact impact factors that we'll talk about later on here. And the second piece of good news is that long-term, these hard inquiries are gonna basically fall off your credit report after just two years where they're no longer going to affect your score. Actually, the immediate impact that hard inquiries and new credit have on your score sort of just fades pretty quickly after just a few months. So the common myth here is that getting new credit is really bad for you, but in reality, the effect of new credit is pretty minimal and short-term because what happens is that after a few months after a new account shows up on your credit report, other higher impact factors start to take over and can lead to increases in your score. However, it works both ways because those higher impact factors can also decrease your credit score if you're not being careful, which is exactly what caused my own score to drop by 25 points overnight. So let's talk about that next year because the second reason that you might be killing your credit score is by having a balance that's too high. Now, this has to do with a factor of your score called amounts owed, which affects around 30% of it. And one big part of the amounts owed factor is something called credit utilization, which has to do with the balances on your credit cards relative to the limits on those cards. Basically, credit utilization is calculated by taking your statement balance from the end of a monthly billing cycle, which can be found on your credit card statement, and then you divide that statement balance by your credit card's limit to get a percentage, and depending on how high or how low that percentage is, your score could move up or down by a little or a lot. Now, most experts recommend that people aim to keep this credit utilization percentage below 30%, but ideally below 10% on each individual credit card, as well as across all cards combined, and having a utilization utilization below 10% is good because it basically shows you're responsibly managing your credit and not overspending, so you're not likely gonna have issues with making payments. Now, aiming for below 10% credit utilization is good, but what I found is that the lower the utilization, the better. So for me, I try to keep mine around one to 2%, and this is where my mistake happened just the other week that dropped my score. So recently, I got added as an authorized user on the Capital One Venture X card that my fiance just got, and what happens is that in many situations, when you get added as an authorized user like I did, the issuer is gonna start reporting the statement balances and other information from that account to the credit bureaus, and they're gonna report that for both the primary cardholder as well as the authorized user cardholders. Now, my fiance got a $20,000 credit limit on this card, which normally gives us plenty of spending room to work with to keep a low credit utilization, and that's because higher limits tend to lead to lower utilizations if spending remains unchanged. So for example, with a $200 statement balance and a $20,000 limit, that's gonna be a 1% 
percent utilization, which is very good. But if the credit limit was only two thousand dollars, then that's going to be a ten percent utilization, which isn't too bad. But still, one percent is better than ten percent because remember, the lower the utilization, the better. Now, what happened in my situation was we used this card to book some of our hotels for our upcoming Europe trip. So the statement balance at the end of the billing cycle ended up being sixteen hundred fifty-one dollars, and when you divide that by the twenty thousand dollar limit, that equals a credit utilization of eight point two percent. And again, that's not too bad here, but because it was notably higher than my typical one to two percent utilization, my credit score did see a drop in the short term. Now, normally, if I know that my statement balance is going to be a little high, then I would just pay down some of that before my statement closes. That way, a much lower statement balance gets reported at the end of my monthly billing cycle. But because this was a newer authorized user account, I guess it kind of just went unnoticed until I checked my credit score and saw that big 25 point drop. Now, the good news here with this factor is that with the current credit scoring models, credit utilization doesn't really have a memory. So what that basically means is that even though my utilization was a bit higher on this one specific account last month, which caused the decrease in my score, this month, I'm just gonna make sure that my fiance and I manage this account closely and pay down our balance to be pretty low by the statement closing date. That way we can hit that one to 2% utilization sweet spot and that should help my credit score to see a nice little boost back up to where it was. Now, I think it's important to point out here that as you get a higher credit score in the upper 700s or low 800s, then you probably don't need to stress about always having credit utilization sitting at one to 2% all the time. So I think if you're not applying for a mortgage, a loan, or a credit card anytime soon, then you can just aim for a credit utilization below 10%. But whenever you're ready to apply for important new credit, then in the months leading up to that, that's when you might wanna focus and really dial in that credit utilization down to those low percentages. Now, okay, so clearly credit utilization is something that we can control if we just manage the balances on our credit cards. And then we can also manage how often we apply for new credit. But next here for the third reason why you might be killing your credit score, this is something that to most people sort of just seems out of their control. So they have trouble with this. And that reason is having low age of credit. So age of credit is another factor that accounts for around 15% of our credit score when we take a look at that chart. And like I said, even though this factor might seem like it's out of our control, there's actually a few really important tips to know here that can save you some headache and avoid your score dropping in the future. So the first tip with age of credit is to be patient because obviously you can't control time and it's gonna take some time for this factor to begin positively affecting your score. Tip number two is there's actually two main parts that go into your age of credit that you really gotta pay attention to. So those are gonna be the age of your oldest account and your average age of credit. And the tricky thing here that not everyone is aware of is that these factors can change over time and go up or down depending on whether you open new cards or close old ones. So for example, let's say that right now my oldest credit account is seven years old, and then I have two other accounts that are five years old and three years old. So my oldest account will be seven years, and my average age across those combined accounts is seven plus five plus three divided by three accounts, which is an average age of five years. So both those ages are not too bad for someone like me who's 27. But if for some reason I closed my oldest account a while ago, and let's pretend that it was about to be removed from my credit report, even though closed accounts stay on report for seven to 10 years, but let's assume my oldest account just ages off my report, so then my other existing accounts would grow to be six and four years old. And let's also say that I opened another new credit card account, which would have zero years of credit age. Now my oldest account on my credit report has decreased to six years old, and my average age of credit would also decrease in this scenario as well, because six plus four plus zero divided by three accounts equals an average age of 3.33 years. So based off that example, tip number three with age of credit is to start with a no annual fee credit card as your oldest account account and do not ever close it because that oldest account is going to continue to age year after year and basically help to increase your score for free. Now, if you made the mistake of opening up a credit card that does have an annual fee as your first credit account, then first of all, see if you can downgrade that to a no annual fee card first. And if you can't downgrade it and you still wanna close it, then go ahead and make sure the other factors of your credit profile are strong enough before you go ahead and close that if you no longer wanna pay the annual fee. Tip number four with age of credit is to take it slow with new credit applications because if you open up new credit cards or new loans too quickly, then you're gonna weigh down the average age of credit within those accounts. However, luckily, since age of credit is a factor that only accounts for around 15% of your score, it is considered a low to low medium impact factor. Factor. So the thing that I recommend to people is to try to limit new credit applications to one new account every three to six months, especially with new credit cards. Opening new credit cards and stuff like that within that three to six month time frame is gonna help you to spread out the effect of your average age of credit
credit, but honestly, it also really helps out with the new credit factor that we talked about earlier as well. And that's because you won't really have that many hard inquiries all at once to sort of drag down your score. So I think a good general piece of advice here with this video with your credit score is that slow and steady wins the race. So yeah, just be patient and be very thoughtful about what you want your credit score to do for you. And then you can go ahead and use all these factors in this video to your own advantage. Now, if you're just opening credit cards and that's really all you have on your credit report, then that's okay. But imagine if you and someone else out there have the exact same credit profile with the same age of credit and the same number of credit card accounts. However, the other person also has a mortgage and a car loan on their credit report as well. Chances are they're likely gonna have a score that's just a little bit higher than yours. And that's the fourth reason for why your credit score might not be where you want it to be. And that is gonna be having a credit mix that is not diverse. Basically, credit scoring models like to see that people have a good history of managing different types of credit accounts. And that's because, for example, the way someone manages a credit card is gonna be very different than the way they manage a car loan or a mortgage or something like that. However, it's also not smart to just borrow money and open up different types of loans and credit just so that you can basically check off the box on your credit score for having a diverse credit mix. So the tip that I give to people is pretty simple with this factor, and that is to literally just live your life and open up new credit when it makes sense for you. So you don't have to open up credit builder loans. You don't have to finance a car with an auto loan if you can pay for it in cash, but at least start with a no annual fee credit card to start building up credit with a revolving account like that. And then slowly over time, as you need other loans, then you can add them when it makes sense. And you'll be able to add them at the best interest rates as well, which is one of the best reasons for having a high credit score in the first place. Again, though, just live your life, be patient, and sort of just let the credit mix factor come to you over time, because this is gonna be another low impact factor, and it only accounts for another 10% of your credit score. So there's definitely gonna be more important factors to focus on first and other things that you should address first, especially with this next reason that you might be killing your credit score, which can cause it to drop up to 100 points or more if you're not being careful, and that is missing payments. Now, payment history is gonna account for around 35% of your score, which makes this the most important factor out of everything we've talked about so far here in this video. And for this, you wanna basically have a 100% payment history where you've never missed a single payment across any account. And basically, that's gonna show lenders out there that you've got a good reputation of being very reliable when it comes to paying your bills on time every single month. Now, something like a fixed rate mortgage or any other installment loan like that is gonna have the same payment amount due every month. But when it comes to credit cards, technically you're only gonna be required to pay the minimum payment by the payment due date to be considered on time. And you're gonna see this minimum payment amount on your credit card statement, which is what the credit card companies really want you to pay. But we wanna be smart and instead pay the statement balance, which can also be found on that credit card statement. And if we pay the full statement balance by the payment due date, then not only is that payment gonna be considered on time as well, but more importantly, it's going to avoid you getting charged any expensive interest, which is what we really want from credit cards. Now, if you do happen to miss a payment by that payment due date, then don't panic here because if you make that payment within 30 days after that due date, what's gonna happen is your credit score should not drop just yet because most credit card issuers and other lenders out there do not report a missed payment until after 30 days have passed from that due date, but you're still probably gonna get hit with a late fee and you really are putting yourself at risk of hurting your credit score. So please set reminders for yourself for your payment due date so that way you never forget making a payment. Now, if you're more than 30 days late, then that is when your missed payment is most likely going to get reported over to the credit bureaus and really start to hurt your score by a lot. But you still wanna make sure you pay that off as soon as possible if you can, because having a payment that's 60 days late is gonna be worse than 31 days late. And then having a payment that's 90 days late is gonna be worse than 60 days and so on. And also if you start having multiple missed payments reported, then that is gonna be worse than one missed payment. So again, you gotta make sure that you stay on top of this stuff. Now, personally, the things that I focused on to increase my own credit score really sort of boil down to three things. So number one is I try to be patient and remember to take it slow with things because I don't want to have too many new credit accounts from hard inquiries at any one time. And I also don't want to drag down my average age of credit too much with too many new accounts. The second thing that I focus on is I never miss a single payment because that is the most important credit score factor and deserves the most attention. And to do that, I put my installment loans like my car loan on auto pay so that every single month money is just automatically taken from my bank account to pay down that bill. For my 17 credit cards, I like to set reminders on my phone that remind me when my payments are due. And a bonus tip here is that with many issuers, you can actually just call them up and have them move your payment due date. That way there ends up being more consistency across all your cards. So for me, I was able to move most of my credit card due dates to be on the 24th of every month. And then the third thing that I focus on is checking in on my credit card balances, maybe just a few times per month. And that's just to make sure those balances are not getting too high relative to the credit limits on those cards. And if the balances ever do get too high, then I just pay down some of them 
them before my statement closing date. That way my credit utilization gets reported as being lower and it sort of just helps my score to be at the highest level possible. Now, because so many people get confused about things like credit utilization and exactly when to pay down your credit card bill, what I did was I made another full video you can go ahead and check out on the screen over here next that explains everything very simply and in more detail. So as always, thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.